This is the Pooja Anger Deep Podcast. From 98.1 CHFI Studios in Toronto, Canada. Hey Toronto, this is Ed Sheeran. This is Kelly Clarkson. Hi, this is Brian Adams. This is Adele. This is Madonna. It's Michael Bublé. And you're listening to the Pooja Anger Deep Show. It's fun. They're amazing. All right, when you think about being on time, if I'm, let's say, five to ten minutes late, is that still on time or is that late? I think it depends what scenario we're talking about. Work, that's late. A social situation, eh, it's on time. Interesting. Okay, because uh, Gen Zers were surveyed about this. And Gen Z, just to remind you, they were born between 1997 and 2012. Almost half of them surveyed said that they believe being late five to ten minutes is actually the same thing as being on time. Doesn't that kind of sum up all the assumptions everyone makes about that generation? (laughs) Oh, you know, we throw all these things about the generation. That might be the one that's sort of like the headline for the generation. Okay, but I'm going to I'm going to defend them a little bit. If you live in Toronto, okay, and you experience GTA traffic, just getting around from point A to point B. Totally. There is no way you're showing up on time anywhere. And like traffic is always bad. And sometimes like. You like the same time that it took you the last time you took the same route. It's uh-huh. different. It's true, but then then the generations don't even matter. Then it's just across the board, right? Because yeah. everyone's subject to the same. But I do think the context matters. Like for an appointment, five minutes is late. For a meeting, five minutes is late. For work, five minutes is late. For a party that your buddies are throwing, if you invite me over, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, that's fine. That's on time. You're not going to be sitting there looking at your stopwatch. Well, I mean, then there's also some, I mean, you could, that's a weird friend. It'd be a weird party host. <laughs> yes. So like, much fun at that party. You're like, you're giving tardy. <laughs> yeah. We are 45 seconds away from playing Madonna. <laughs> this party's going to be really fun. I'm so glad I, I came. <laughs> Let's do the countdown, guys. Three, two, one. No, uh, I think there's probably no surprise then that generationally, there is a lot of disagreement. In the same survey, they also asked boomers about this and boomers said they have zero tolerance for being late. Zero. So like there's no wiggle room. There's no five minutes, no 10 minutes, traffic, whatever it might be. Late is late. But I, I also feel, and I don't want to generalize because I hate all these general assumptions based on generations, but there are people and probably some boomers, probably some not people who like to arrive early. They take it the other way. They yes. don't like being late so much that they like being early. And that stresses me out equally. <laughs> Why are you here? I'm like still so- setting up. Yeah, like if someone was showing up at my place for an appointment and they're like, hey, I know our appointment's at noon. It's 1130. I'm just down in the lobby. So whenever you're ready. And yeah. I'm like, no, I'm just getting in the shower. Yeah. Like with this half an hour. I've got no, you're food supposed in to- my mouth. And now I feel like I have to rush because you're here early. Yeah. And there's something uh, culturally as well. I know that we have something called Indian Standard Time that we joke about. Mm-hmm. IST, which means that like, you know, when uh, Indian people organize something, it's never going to be on time. And they don't uh-huh. expect like as a host, I don't expect you to show up on time. Like I th- if I say seven, I actually mean eight. I think it also applies to Italians, IST. Yes. IST. You see, my, my brother and his wife, Indian plus Italian, so they're like several hours late <laughs> all the time because it multiplies. Yeah. They're like, uh, what, the next day or the day before? Uh, yeah. Yeah, something like that, which is not to be confused with the Irish goodbye, which is leaving early. <laughs> so maybe it's not generational, it's cultural. There's so many things. From CHFI Studios, it's the Pooja and Gurdip Podcast. Are you ready? Yeah, we are. Oh, yep, yeah. that too. We'll take the sunshine. I bet you uh, parents, kids have been ready for the summer for a long time. They've probably been doing the countdown all month. I feel like this was probably the week where parents were like, lunch? Okay. Uh, like mailing in lunch. You know, like like we have some leftover fortune cookies and soy <laughs> yeah, sauce yeah. packets. Just yeah, throw yeah. that in. Just go. It's mommy and daddy time. Yeah. It's the last, like what a time right now if you could freeze this in time. Not only are we going to a long weekend, which generally the, the happiness level of the city is just off the charts going mm-hmm. into a long weekend. You couple that with last day of school. This is like uh, what is one of those like those solar eclipses that happens like once every <laughs> 75 years. And These you two need things protective happening. glasses just yes, to get through it. Seriously. Yes. It's amazing. It's a positive Friday. Uh, thank you to the teachers. Thank you to the parents. I don't know. Are parents happy this is the last of school stuff? Mm-hmm. You got two kids. You know what? I'm happy that I don't have to make lunches, which I also didn't make today. I'm like, take whatever you want. <laughs> See? And, yeah, and, it's true. But it's now you got to keep You're them like, occupied. Here's some Lunchables from 1986. <laughs> Honestly, like I'm always like every night I'm always, it's like nine. I'm like, I got to make lunch still. And last night I was like, just take whatever you want. Yeah. I'm like, and you don't have to worry no. about that. Yes, you have to keep them entertained. Teachers are like obviously exhausted. They work so hard. They're looking forward to their break. Parents, I mean, it's just, it's good vibes all around. Today. Good vibes. And do you guys remember, like, uh, my mom would, this is, I won't take credit for it. It was my mom who's very thoughtful, like, on the last day of school. 
She'd always send me with a little gift for the teacher. Oh, yeah. It was like a mug or like something just to be like, hey, thanks. Even I remember one year I was like, I liked most of my teachers. One year I really didn't like my teacher. I was like, I don't want to take her a gift. <laughs> well, not a good year, but I did it anyways because my mom made me. You know, I wonder what the equivalent is now. Like when you go to give a gift to a teacher, and I don't know if it still happens, but if you gave them like a mug, are they like, yeah, where's... Where's the Starbucks gift card? Where's the? Is that what happens? Because they're oh, like, oh gosh, I hope not. I think any gift is. It's like it's about the thought, right? Uh, yeah. Even if it's, it doesn't like, even have to be so, like a mug or something. Um, it could be like a nice note, like a, a thoughtful card of a teacher, like changed your life in a positive way. Absolutely. I'm just thinking they probably have a lot of mugs. That's right? true. Over the years, how about an apple? How about an mugs? apple? Oh, yeah. no, I already got those two. <laughs> I'm wondering what is the most memorable gift that you ever got from a student. If you're a teacher yeah. and you're listening. We want to know. Call in all teachers. What's the most memorable goodbye gift at the end of a year a student has given you? Again, it doesn't have to be something, you know, like monetary. It could be just a thoughtful note. It could be whatever. It could even just be a thank you in the hall. Mm -hmm. A hug. What is the most memorable gift or sentiment you've ever received from a student? Teachers, we're looking at you. Let's go to Tina in Maple. What's going on? So it happened this year. The student I work with had special needs. And he and his mom gave me a handmade book with all the memories over the five years that we worked together with wow. pictures, stickers, personal notes. It was amazing. Aww. Oh, my goodness. That's making me like tear up just hearing that. That's incredible. Yeah, it was pretty incredible. It's a pretty incredible family. Tina, I think that really just speaks to you as well in terms of what impact you've had on him. Well, that's very kind of you to say. Thank you. And do you figure you'll still be in touch with the student and this family even after you stop working together? Absolutely. Aww. Absolutely. Because he has sewed embroidered himself, knit himself into a piece of my heart. Isn't that, that can't go to anywhere else. <laughs> Sorry. That's so yeah, sweet. No, thank you for sharing. Then this is what it's all about is that, you know, we appreciate everything you do. And sometimes I know it probably feels like a thankless job, but things like this just, just warm my heart. Thank you. It, it makes me feel pretty good too. Nice. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. You warmed our hearts this morning. You have a terrific long weekend and happy Canada Day, Tina. You too. Thank you. That's just, I know we're all kind of tearing up in here. Can you imagine the reaction getting that book for five years of memories? I'd be a puddle on the floor. For sure. Uh, And we love our teachers, so we love hearing from you this morning. Let's go to Tony in Bolton. So what's the most memorable gift or goodbye message you got from a student? Well, it actually happened last night while I was at the uh, commencement ceremony for my high school. And a student approached me and said, thank you very much for being inspirational. And that for me was the best gift I could receive because really all we want to do is connect with these kids and ensure that we're giving them a great example. Aww. Oh, that's, that's really so sweet. Nice. Um, Tony, do you want to shout yeah, out so, um, your school and then tell us like what grade you teach? So I'd like to shout out to St. Michael Catholic Secondary School in Bolton. Um, I work in the co-op and guidance department. But more importantly, I'd like to shout out to my wife, Patricia, from St. John the Baptist School, who's retiring today. Oh, wow. Oh, congratulations. Retirement day. Thank you very much. And I'll pass on the message. All right. You have a great summer and have a great long weekend as well. And congratulations to your wife. Thank you so much. Thank you very Bye. much. Have a wonderful day. That was awesome. He was multitasking. I think he was in the Tim Hortons <laughs> drive through as well. I heard the crinkle of the bag and the, hi, can I take your order? <laughs> double, double, please. Yeah. I just got to say, I mean, that is just like, what a great day. There's so many things to celebrate uh, for his wife too. Yeah, he's been called inspirational. His wife's retiring. He just got a bagel belt. I mean, life is good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, go to Lori in Georgetown. Uh, what is that story, that memorable story from a student? You know, kids are so thoughtful and they're always so appreciative at the end of the year. But there was one year in particular where I had this student in grade four and he had given me a run for my money the entire year. I mean, (laughs) talk about a challenge. And the whole year, it seemed like he never liked me. You know, it was just always miserable to be in class. But on the last day of school, in the very final moments when we were saying our goodbyes, He came up to me, gave me the biggest hug ever, started crying, and would not let go. Oh, my. And I'm I'm telling you, it was so emotional. I could barely keep it together. And I'll never forget that moment, how it just made my heart burst. Oh, wow. Lori, I love that. Because sometimes you think, like, am I getting through? Am I, you know, am I making an impression? Am I making a difference? And obviously you are. That's right. Yeah, I mean, you can't control what goes on at home, but you you can control what goes on during the day, and it just made, made me so full of joy. That 
is a powerful moment. Lori, thank you for sharing that with us. And I think I speak for many when I say thank you to all of our teachers and mm-hmm. all the students. You've been great students all year as well. You deserve a break. Yeah. Enjoy it. And uh, we couldn't get to all of your calls, but we appreciate all of you. Whoa! The Pooja Ingerdeep Podcast. This is the Pooja and Gurdjieff Podcast. Have you guys heard about raw dogging? Raw dogging is foregoing all of those amenities and luxuries and literally staring straight forward at the in-flight map or just looking (laughs) off into space. No headphones, uh, often no water, no in-flight entertainment, just staring straight ahead. This is all inspired by, I don't know if you watched, it was on Apple TV, I believe, uh, the show with Idris Idris Alba called Hijack. Yes. It was a seven-episode show where uh, he's on a plane that gets commandeered by bad guys. And as a result, like they cut off all the entertainment, the Wi-Fi. He's just sort of staring straight ahead for seven hours. <laughs> um, now, I've looked at that in-flight map. I mean, I can see how you can like spend a good 10 minutes maybe getting lost in the map. Yeah, yeah. You know how much time is left in the flight? But that's like 10 minutes, the whole flight. The whole flight. I'm like, why on earth would you do this? It sounds like such a dumb idea. But these are the kind of things people are posting. I'll read you a couple of posts that people are doing this. I guess it's like a social media trend. Okay. This guy posts... Posted a, it's a picture of him just staring straight at the screen on the plane. He goes, just raw dog to flight from Orlando to L.A. No water, no snacks, no music enter- or entertainment. Seat fully upright. The power <laughs> of my mind knows no limits. Wow. And people, okay, so I've seen some bizarre things on flights. Like I, I remember seeing somebody doing their taxes. I, at least I think that's what they what? were doing. They had a spreadsheet open and they had a bunch of receipts that they like pulled out and they were entering in all their receipts. And I thought... It's actually kind of brilliant because this is stuff you have no time for when you're at home. It could have been like if they are they have their own business, they could have been entering their like travel expenses. So maybe yeah. that was it. Yeah. keeping receipts on a plane, that seems like a lot to bring on a plane if you're going to do your taxes. Mm-hmm. I'm all for being productive on a plane. I'll often do breath work on a plane. What do you mean? Like I'll, I'll, I've got like meditation apps or whatever, which is great because it just relaxes you, puts you in a good headspace. I don't know how great it is for the person beside me though. Cause <laughs> wait, wait, what do you sound like when you're doing breath work? They're just like, so I'm, they're sitting beside me and I'm basically like. <laughs> <laughs> no. Lion breath. <laughs> <laughs> God, we are never flying together. And you see my face, it's very intense. Okay, I like when you said breathing, I thought like breath work, I was like, <laughs> I'm not, this is not Lamaze I'm, class, I'm I not know, having a baby. But that's what I pictured, yours was far worse. Okay, you know what, I'm going to do my breath work, you keep it to your raw dog. <laughs> From CHFI Studios, it's the Pooja and Gurdip Podcast. Still a great song. I don't care Love what anyone that says. Song. Miley Cyrus, part of the It's a banger. Happy 4th of July to our friends down south. It's 4th of July today. I was in Boston on the 4th of July, and everybody walked around going, Happy 4th, Happy 4th, Happy 4th. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> is that Now, is that a Boston thing or an American thing? I think it's an American thing, but just because they had the accent, it was like, Happy 4th, Happy 4th. You know what? I have a lot of uh, um, American cousins on my cousin's group chat. Mm-hmm. Let me throw out a Happy 4th. In the uh, in the group chat and see what the response is. Okay, that's I'll good. Do that. Also, so it was Canada Day earlier this week, and a lot of my cousins sent out like little Happy Canada Day messages. One of my cousins in Texas is actually a stand up comedian, and uh, really? she sent this on the group chat, which I thought was really funny. Let me just pull it up. She goes, and I'm going to do this in her accent because okay. she's from Dallas. She goes, the whole metric system throws me off. Y'all celebrate the fourth three days early, <laughs> <laughs> which is just the perfect American thing to say. It because is such it's so an American thing to say. gazing and hilarious. Yes. And, yeah. and, you know, they say things different than we say. Like there's the, the certain words that we use to describe something versus the way they do. Like if I say pop, you know what I'm talking about. Soda. They say soda. They say soda. Yeah. Okay. If I say toque. Uh, right? What do they call it? Just like a hat? They call a it a beanie. beanie. A beanie, yeah. They call it a beanie. Yeah. If I say highway. Oh, freeway? Freeway. Yeah. Right? Like these are still things that they say that we don't say. And I know that we all kind of watch a lot of the same, you know, TV shows and movies and whatnot. So as a part of pop culture, we kind of speak the same way. Right. But there are still some things I'm like, oh, it's we, funny. The soda one really throws me off because when I ask for a soda, I'm asking for like a club soda. True. Right? Like often to mix with an alcoholic drink, right? Yeah. A soda could be anything in America. Like it could be a Coke, it could be a Sprite, it could be whatever. Yeah, we had um, Scott Hellman on the show and I remember he w- we were talking about him living here versus living in LA and some of the things he notices and he said that one thing that Americans say to him that he just like drives him nuts is when 
like he'll be like, oh, um, oh, sorry about that. And they'll be like, you're fine. You're fine. And he's like, I know, I know I'm fine. You don't I, need to tell me I'm fine. I don't like here. We'd be like, oh, it's okay. Or, oh, sorry. Yeah. Like, but there they go. You're fine. Which to, to me feels a little aggressive. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're fine. Yeah. I'm like, well, I, I know I'm fine. I was just saying sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little weird. Mm, you're fine. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Pooja and Gurdip podcast. Listen to Pooja and Gurdip live weekday mornings from 5 to 9. Only on 98.1 CHFI. Toronto's perfect music mix.